Ever get this feeling like, maybe AI is just making things up as it goes along? Haha, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Like, it's happened to all of us, right? <laughs> You're trying to get some info from an AI, and it just sounds too good to be true. Right, right. Turns out there's a whole area of research trying to figure out why AI sometimes, well, kind of goes off script. Totally. And that's what we're digging into today with this paper called To Believe or Not to Believe Your LLM. Kitchy, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So they have this really interesting idea in the paper. They talk about AI knowledge like it's a spider web, uh -huh. which I thought was pretty clever, you know, because it gets you thinking about all the connections, the gaps. And where those gaps might be. Exactly. And that's what they're getting at, right? Yeah. Not all AI uncertainty is created equal. Yeah. So they break it down into two main types, epistemic uncertainty and aleatoric uncertainty. Okay. Now, stay with me here. Epistemic uncertainty. That's basically like the AI saying, hold on, I haven't learned enough about this yet to be sure. Like it's encountered a hole in that spider web of knowledge. I, I see, like it's missing some information. Right, exactly. But then you've got aleatoric uncertainty. Okay. And this is where things get a bit trickier. It's not that the AI is lacking info. It's more like the question itself has multiple right answers. You know? Oh, interesting. So instead of a hole in the web, it's like seeing the web branch off in a bunch of different directions. Does it make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So it's not that the AI is wrong. It's just... It's got options. Exactly. Yeah. And knowing the difference between these two types of uncertainty, that's super important. Especially <laughs> now when we're starting to depend on AI for, well, almost everything. Absolutely. Especially with things like, you know, medical diagnoses and financial forecasts. You really need to know. If it's a gap in knowledge or just dot options. Exactly. And that's what makes this paper so cool. They actually figured out a way to test how confident an AI is in its answers. Yeah. It's like they're putting it under interrogation. Chadley, of course. Oh, interesting. How do they do that? They call this technique iterative prompting. Iterative prompting. Okay. Yeah. And it's actually pretty straightforward. Like, imagine you ask the AI, what is the capital of France? Simple, right? Right. But then you keep repeating the question, but T, you add on, or is it Paris? Mm -hmm. After each time. Okay. So you're basically introducing doubt. Exactly. You're planting that seed of doubt. And by watching how the AI's answers change, like do they get shaky, do they stay firm, that gives the researchers clues about its confidence level. That's clever. So what happens? Well, they actually tried it out, you know, with that capital city example. Uh -huh. And the results were really something. When the AI gave a really confident answer right off the bat, you know, low epistemic uncertainty, all those wrong suggestions didn't really phase it. It stuck to its guns. Exactly. Like it was thinking, nope, I've crunched the numbers of the data. I'm not budging. Right, right. But here's the wild part. When the AI was a little unsure, you know, like high epistemic uncertainty, it became way more suggestible. Like if they right. kept feeding it the wrong answer, yeah. it was more likely to just spit that wrong answer back. Fascinating. So the less it knows, the more likely it is to just agree. It seems that way, which kind of makes sense if you yeah. think about it. If you're not sure yourself, you're more likely to be swayed by what others say. That's true. That's true. But still, it highlights how important it is to like measure this uncertainty, yeah, yeah. to be able to tell when we can really trust what the AI is telling us. 100%. And that is where this whole idea of mutual information comes in. Mutual information. Okay, that sounds a little intimidating. Maybe a little, but it's really cool. Think of it this way. It's a way to put a number on epistemic uncertainty. Like how much are those repeated prompts, that little interrogation, how much are they actually changing what the AI says back? I see. So a high mutual information score means that the AI is easily swayed. You got it. Yeah. And a low score means it's pretty sure of itself. Wow. So they can actually quantify that. Exactly. And that's huge because now we're not just guessing. You know, we can measure it. We can study it. It's like we've been working with this AI and uh -huh. it's been this total mystery, right? Yeah. And now, now we're getting a peek behind the curtain. Exactly. And that okay. is so important, especially if we're going to start really relying on these AI systems. Right. Like, how can you trust something if you have no idea how it works? Exactly. So, okay, we've been talking about this idea of measuring uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But what does that actually look like in the real world? Like, how does this play out? Okay, so imagine this. You're using an AI, maybe like a research tool, right? Right. And it gives you this piece of information. Okay, yeah. But then it also tells you how sure it is about that information. Oh, interesting. Like a confidence rating or something. Yeah. Like it might say high confidence or low confidence, maybe double check this. Wouldn't that be helpful? That would be amazing. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with stuff you don't know a lot about. Absolutely. 
And it gives you like the power to decide how much you trust it, to maybe go do some more research on your own. Instead of just blindly accepting what the AI spits out. Exactly. And this could apply to way more than just research tools, you know. Think about AI assistants, those customer service chatbots, even medical diagnoses. It's like the difference between the AI just saying, here's the answer. Yeah. And it's saying, here's the answer, and here's why I think I'm right. That's a great way to put it. And that shift from blind faith to actually being informed that's what I think is so exciting about this research. It is. It's like we're finally starting to understand how to work with AI, not just like be amazed by it. Totally. And as AI gets even more, I don't know, integrated into our lives. Which it will. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We need to keep having these conversations about transparency and trust. A hundred percent. Well, I think this has been a pretty fascinating deep dive. Yeah, I've learned a lot. Me too. Yay. And hopefully our listeners have too. It's a lot to think about, but that's kind of the point, right. right? That's how we keep learning. Exactly. Okay. So thanks for joining us, everyone, for another deep dive into the world of AI. Until next time.